Do you want to get your music onto Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, TikTok, MTV? Well, maybe not MTV, but every other major streaming service on the planet. In this video, I'll show you how. To get your music onto streaming platforms, you're going to need an online music distributor. That's a company that you can upload your completed music files, artwork and artist info to, who will then get those files onto streaming services that you specify. They'll then collect any royalties from plays of your music on those platforms and pay you either a cut of those royalties or all of them. Now, there are loads of different online distributors out there. Some will distribute your music for free, albeit very slowly, and then take between a 15 to 25% cut of any royalties that your music generates. Some will charge a single flat fee for each song or album that you want to release. The distributor that I recommend and the sponsor of this video, DistroKid, charge a single fee per year as little as 1999, and you can release as many songs, singles, EPs or albums as you like. There's no cap to the amount of music that you can release. I've been using DistroKid to release my own music under the pseudonym Wiredrawn since 2017, and I've been using DistroKid for that long for one main reason. They make releasing music really easy. I'm not a tech expert, I'm not a music lawyer. I just want to get my music from my computer onto streaming services, and DistroKid make that more easy and straightforward to do than any other online distributor I've ever come across. So if you just wanted a straightforward answer to how to release your music online, there you are, DistroKid is the way to go. You can even save 7% on any of their yearly plans when you join through the link in the description below this video. Happy trails. If you want a bit more in-depth info about how all this works, then stick around and I'll take you through as I release one of my own tracks using DistroKid. Before you get to the point of actually releasing music through DistroKid, you'll need to join up with them, and there are three different plans to choose from. The Musician plan costs $19.99 for the year, and allows you to, amongst other things, upload unlimited songs, upload unlimited lyrics, gets you a Spotify verified checkmark, and allows you to collect earnings from royalty splits. Meaning that if you and another person, for example, worked on a track, you can set up a royalty split so that you will both be paid equally any royalties that are accrued from that release. For $35.99 a year, the Musician Plus plan gives you all of that, plus extra features like customizable release dates, pre-order dates, iTunes pricing, and a maximum of two artists or bands. And the ultimate plan gives you access to all of that as well, plus up to a hundred different artists or bands. Which of these plans is right for you then? Well, if you're just starting out and want to get your first couple of albums out there, the musician plan is incredible value. If you want more control over things like when your single or album will be released, or if you have an existing fan base who might be interested in pre-ordering an upcoming release, the Musician Plus plan is still amazing value for what you get. For most of you watching this, the ultimate plan is probably overkill, and I think it's aimed more at indie labels as opposed to artists. I'm set up with the Musician Plus plan, so as we go through the release process, I'll highlight any settings or options that are unique to that plan specifically. Alright, I'm going to shrink into a wee bubble in the corner so you can see what I'm doing. Wee! Oh, right then. So when you first log into your DistroKid account, you're going to come to a screen that looks a little bit like this. I already have some releases on here already, as I mentioned earlier, but when you're ready to upload your album or track or whatever, you want to head up to upload at the top there and click on upload music. 
So on this next screen is where we're going to enter all the information and stuff in order to get the track released to all of the streaming services. So you can see at the top here, the very, very top, it says priority. Your account has been marked priority by DistroKid staff. DistroKid have set that up so that I can show you all of these features. Yours will say something different depending on what plan you've gone for. Underneath that, you can see all of the different services that DistroKid will distribute your music to. All the big boys are there. All of them are ticked apart from, you'll see at the end, their Snapchat. The reason for that is that DistroKid can handle any cover songs that you want to release on pretty much any other platform. Content ID or the equivalent on Snapchat is in a bit of a weird place at the minute, which is why they specify specifically when you pick Snapchat, whether or not you own 100% of the publishing rights for this release. So just bear that in mind if you plan to release a cover of some kind. Um, yes, 100% of the publishing. You probably want to keep all these ticked, to be honest, unless there's a specific service that you really don't want to have your music on. Um, but yeah, so for this, I'm going to keep all of those ticked. I'm happy for this track to be distributed to all of these different streaming services. Underneath that, it's got a number of songs, one song, a single, and then you can select oh, up to 35 songs at a time. I'm only releasing one single at the moment. You would just go ahead and pick as many songs as you want to release at the same time if they're part of an album, for example. More on that a little bit later on. You can then select whether or not this track has been previously released. Yes, it'll ask for the original release date. This has not, so we will click no. So artist band name, this is interesting. So this is a slightly different bit of, or a slightly different piece of music from me, I should say. Doesn't really fit under the wire drawn banner. So as I said, I've been set up the, with the equivalent of the Musician Plus plan. So I can have up to two different artists or band names. So I'm going to change this just now. Before I do, if we skip ahead for a second, it has artist already on Spotify because I already have an artist upload or account on Spotify, this will be added alongside that if I was to upload it as Wiredrawn. Same goes for Apple Music, um, and then the same goes for YouTube Music as well. I'm going to change this, and we can see how this changes the information after it. Uh, so we are releasing this under Future Fathers, all one word. So you can see DistroKid, have a look and see if there are any artists already going by that name on all of these different services. What I did notice um, is if I put a space here, it will search again, and there is already an artist named Future Fathers with a space on Spotify. If I remove that space again, you can see that there are no other artists that DistroKid can find on Spotify or Apple Music, which is probably a good thing to be fair. So this is the first release under the name, artist name, band name, whatever, Future Fathers. So no, I don't have any Future Fathers releases live on Spotify. Same for Apple Music. You can see it's checking Apple's sometimes slow system for name availability. Please wait. I'll carry on while we're waiting for that. Artist already in YouTube Music. No. Artist already on Instagram. No. Right. So that's popped up saying that it's Absolutely fine. There's no other artists with the same name on Apple Music, which is great. Uh, so no, not on Instagram, not on Zuckerbook either. So the next point, release date. So uh, you can only specify a specific release date if you are on the Musician Plus plan. If you're just on the Musician plan, it will just be released whenever. If you just want to release your music and you don't really care about a specific release date, then don't worry if you're on the musician plan, that's not going to matter to you. Um, I don't really care about a release date for this. What's the date today as I film this? February the 6th, 2023, so the same day. Setting your release date to at least one week in the future. You know what? I, I, we'll just leave that as it is. And whenever it's released is when it's released. If you did have a specific release date in mind, you could set it here. I don't, so I'll just leave it. Record label, again, if you're on the Musician Plan, this will just be set to the generic DistroKid record label. Uh, on the Musician Plus or the Ultimate Plan, you can specify a specific label. 
I'm going to keep this on wire drawn records just to keep things nice and easy. Um, you will not have this option on the musician plan, if that matters to you. Um, UPC, again, I'm going to leave that to just let DistroKid generate one for me. You can specify your own if that's something you want to do. Um, I don't, so I'm going to leave it on let DistroKid generate one for me. Okay, so down to album cover art. So DistroKid is very particular about what it's looking for when it comes to album cover or single cover art. The reason for that is that if some of these so don't increase the size of smaller images, stores will reject artwork that contains a website address, etc., etc. These are all just put in place to stop your artwork and your single or your release being rejected from stores altogether, which can happen if you don't kind of adhere to these rules. So... Anyway, so I have some artwork here that I prepared. Uh, if I go to Desktop and Future Fathers, Over Verona is the name of the song, and this is the art that I've prepared for it. So I'll just click Upload. It will just appear there. Um, it does say JPG, PNG, or .gif extension. Optimum, optimal is a perfect square, and optimal size is 3,000 by 3,000, which mine is. So make sure you stick to that, and you shouldn't have any problems. Again, other things to watch out for is make sure you've not got any website addresses, Twitter URLs, things like that on the actual cover art, and you should be fine. Language, I'm going to stick to English. Depending where you are in the world, you might want to change this. I'm just going to keep this to English. Primary genre. Hmm. Um, let's have a look. So I would say kind of ambient. Unfortunately, that is not here. So let's see. What have we got? Pop, pop. But not pop, pop, new age, Latin urban, no, no, holiday, German folk, no. Um, Six and a half hours later. Alternative, I guess. Secondary genre, I mean, alternative. Alternative, alternative. Okay, moving on to the information for the track. This just says track one. If I've chosen five tracks to upload, this information would be there for each and every one. Just one song, so just one batch of information to fill out. So song title is Over Verona. Again, you've got some guidance underneath here to adhere to, just to make sure that everything doesn't get rejected from your chosen streaming services. You have the option here to add featured artists to song title. So if you have a collaboration going on and you want to add another artist to the title of the track, you could let them know that you've done that here. You can have the option to add version info to this song title. So if you have a, um, a radio edit, for example, as it says there, um, so a clean version of an otherwise uh, explicit content filled, disgusting, I don't know, track with swear words in it or something like that, um, you can choose that here. So you could click it's a radio edit. Um, yeah, and there you go. It would come up with your song title, radio edit. Um, this is just the normal version, so we will leave it as so. So then next, you have got the option to upload your audio file. You can see the different file formats that DistroKid is looking for. You've got WAV file, MP3, M4A, FLAC, AIFF, or M... M? That's not an M. WMA. I have got a WAV file, I believe. So here we are. Yep. Overrunner.wav. That was exported earlier on. So select and upload. Um, and there we are. In the next section, you can specify whether the track has been mixed using Dolby Atmos, um, which is a feature in Logic Pro. Um, this track has not, but you can also, so if you do have a version of the track that is mixed using Dolby Atmos, you can upload that too at an extra cost. Um, I do not, so I will click no. Um, the next section, songwriter. I wrote the song or managed the songwriter. It's an original tune or another artist wrote it. It's a cover song. So again, what we talked about earlier at the very top uh, with Snapchat not doing a very good job of dealing with cover songs and royalties and such. Um, this part is quite important. So this is a completely original song. If it was not and I click it's a cover song, you've got a whole lot of guidance here um, to cover yourself just in case you get any kind of copyright nonsense happening. Um, so yeah, so you have all this information here. DistroKid will take care of your cover for you. Um, it does cost you a tiny bit more, a dollar per month. So $12 will be billed to your credit card 
to manage the cover song for you. Um, that's a pretty good deal, to be honest, if you have got a cover song you want to release. This is not, however, so we will click I wrote this song or manage the songwriter. Good to know that all that information is there, though, if you do want to release cover songs or that type of thing um, onto streaming services. In the next section, I ask for the songwriter's real name, music and lyrics. There are no lyrics. This is an instrumental. However, I'm still going to enter my info too. And I don't know about a name. Beer. Any explicit lyrics? No lyrics at all. Um, so no, if you were to click yes here, it would give a little warning next to the track on places like Spotify and Apple Music. It would get that little explicit badge next to it. In the next section it asks, is this a radio edit? This ties into the, what we're talking about before, about adding version info to the song title. Um, if you were to click yes, here we are. There is an explicit version of the song, but this is the clean or censored version. That is not the case, so I will click no. Uh, instrumental, this song contains lyrics. This song is instrumental and contains no lyrics. Apple Digital Master, no. So I've used a different mastering software. If you use the Apple Digital Master service, you can let them know here. Preview clip start time then. So TikTok, Apple Music and iTunes, when you click on it, it will just play a certain part of the song. You can specify um, when the good part starts here if you want. So if you want to start the preview clip start time at the start of a chorus or a guitar solo or something like that, you can do that here. I'm quite happy to just let the streaming services decide themselves. I, for one, welcome our AI overlords and bow to their will. Track price, so iTunes and Amazon. There are still places that allow people to buy music, believe it or not. You can set a price using the Musician Plus or the Ultimate Plan. Don't think you can in the Musician Plan, so bear that in mind. So at the bottom here, you have a whole host of different extras that DistroKid offer. Um, you have things like the Discovery Pack, so you can add the single to major global databases that catalogue and acknowledge music information. So you get things like song recognition in cars, registration with SoundScan, audio fingerprinting for rights protection with ACR Cloud. If that sounds interesting to you, go for it. I'm going to leave that blank just now. Underneath that, you can select YouTube Content ID and YouTube Creator Music. You can get notified and paid if your music is ever used in any YouTube videos. This can be really useful, especially if you're uploading music that you plan to get synced with adverts or things like that in the future. Um, so bear that in mind. This could be useful if you're that way inclined. Again, I'm just going to leave this blank just now. Store Maximizer will automatically deliver this single to new online stores and streaming services as DistroKid add them, which is often. And they'll give you notice each time we add the single to a new service. I'm personally quite happy with the different streaming services selected at the top. This means that if you uh, click on this and pay the extra $7.95 a year, your track will be automatically added to any new streaming service that DistroKid adds to their repertoire. So you've got other stuff here as well, like social phone number, um, which is really handy for people in the US. Maybe not so much for me in, in the UK, but, you know, the option is there and, you know, could be very handy. You've got loudness normalization, um, which increases audio level per Spotify's recommendation. You can pay extra to have your audio encoded using MQA, which displays the master badge on Tidal. So if you are all in on Tidal, I want to make sure that your track looks its best inside that particular streaming service. That could be an option you might be interested in. And finally, leave a legacy, a $29 one-time fee, non-recurring. This means that DistroKid will never take your music down from streaming services, which can happen if you subscribe to your plan for a year and then cancel. DistroKid won't do anything to keep your music on streaming services, so you may find that it just stops being available to stream. So this $29 one-time fee will mean that this release will stay up forever, essentially. And at the bottom, you have some important checkboxes that are mandatory. I selected YouTube Music as a store, so I won't email DistroKid later asking, why did you upload my music to YouTube? Okay, 
I'm assuming they got a lot of support emails about this, which is why they've put this at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> so you've opted out, uh, opted into Snapchat and confirmed that I possess the necessary rights and agree to the Snapchat publishing rights grant. What we talked about a bit earlier, you have got the opportunity to take a closer look at the Snapchat publishing rights grant if you want to. Uh, I recorded this music, yes. I'm not using any other artist's name and my name's song titles or album title without their approval. And I have read and agreed to the terms of the DistroKid distribution agreement which I have done previously, you should probably take a second to do so before you click done. Right, and now all that's finished, I can come down here and click the big blue done button. You can see that the album artwork and the track will be uploaded. Shall I sing a little song while we wait? Do, 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 do. That's a copyright strike right there, isn't it? Let's, let's come back when this is done. All right, yeah. And there we are, done. That was easy, wasn't it? So when will this single be released then? So give streaming services up to a week to push your album live. Apple Music often happens faster, sometimes on the same day, but not always. And Spotify takes a bit longer, up to five days. Editor Patrick will jump in in a wee second and let you know which streaming service this release turned up on first and how long it actually took. He'll be here right about. Give it a rest, man. Are you still talking? Pfft. All right, it's Wednesday, the 8th of February. If you can see that there. And the first streaming service to list my track over Verona is... Deezer. So that's literally just a couple of days, which is really, really quick. Definitely don't miss at the very bottom here. They made a pre-save page to help you get more listeners. You can preview that just at the bottom of that done page. And there we are. That's your preview. And we can listen to a preview of the track. That's the ins and outs of how to release your music onto Spotify, Apple Music, etc. using DistroKid. DistroKid have loads more tricks up their sleeves when it comes to releasing and promoting your music. So keep an eye out for some more videos focusing on those exciting wee tidbits coming in the future. And if you're interested in learning more about making your music release ready, watch this video next.